So the first thing to say about diagnosis of nystagmus, certainly from the UK experience, is that commonly people think of nystagmus as the problem, but in fact nystagmus is very commonly just the outcome. It's the most obvious feature of a whole load of underlying conditions. So when a child has nystagmus, and they are often presented to me at age three to four to five months uh, with eyes that move, and that's all we know about the child, the range of reasons for that is extremely broad. So what we do in the clinic is do lots of tests on that child, but also take lots of history. So that means asking questions from mum and dad um, about the baby, but also about the pregnancy and also about mum and dad's history. And all of these things, when combined, give us lots of clues about why that child might have nystagmus. What we then do is we follow a series of tests um, and clinical investigations and these will help us refine even further what we think the cause might be and then ultimately we end up doing usually genetic testing in lots and lots of children. So that's the broad overview but to hang some detail on that, when a child is presented to me at age let's say four months, as I said the range of to underlying diagnoses is extremely broad and that can extend from children who just have nystagmus but everything else about their eye and their health and their body is completely normal or it can be children who have very very poor eyesight and that's why they've got nystagmus or it can be children with a range of neurological or inherited disorders um, which cause problems elsewhere in the body so at that stage the range of diagnoses is very broad as I've said, there's various parts of the history taking which are really important to us. So these are things such as, when did the nystagmus come on? Does the child have any other problems in addition to their nystagmus? What's their growth and their feeding and all the rest of the normal things that we expect to see in babies like? Is there any good family history of eye problems or problems that might be related? So for example, is there a distant relative who everyone knows um, has albinism, for example, because that's quite a common cause for nystagmus and often it can be quite subtle. So we ask lots of very specific questions of parents before we even get into the details of the nystagmus itself. Then what we do is we do all our usual eye tests. So this involves checking the child for whether they're long or short sighted, so checking for glasses, examining the front of the eye, looking for clues as to why they might have nystagmus. And these clues might be things such as the iris having too much light going through it in albinism or related to conditions such as one called aniridia. It might be that the child actually has congenital cataracts and that's why they have nystagmus. And then when we go through and look at the back of the eye, we might see problems there which cause nystagmus, such as that the optic nerve might be too small or there might be a problem with the way the back of the eye is built. What we then do is we look at the child um, in terms of their nystagmus specifically. So these features of the nystagmus itself, which give us lots of clues as well, such as which way does it beat? Is it pendular nystagmus? So does it move slowly in both directions or does it move slowly one way and jerk in another? What direction it's in? Is it mainly horizontal or does it sometimes go vertical? Is it related to head movements? Does the child tend to hold their head in one direction to try and make the nystagmus better? And lots of other features. So there's lots of other bits and bobs that we look at um, with regard to the actual nystagmus itself, which can give us lots of clues. What we would then do is use that information to tailor the tests that we do. Most children would end up with what's called an ERG and a VEP. So these are tests where we put stickers on the head and we ask, get a baby in front of a screen with a black and white checkerboard or flashing lights or coloured lights and we can measure the eye response to that, to that visual stimulus and the brain response and that can again give us lots of clues as to the underlying cause of the nystagmus. Some children will then also have eye tracking so that means sitting in front of a screen where we can track the eye movements and tell in minute detail whether they're accelerating or decelerating and various other features. And sometimes we do that as well. Some children also go on to have very specific tests such as an OCT scan. So this is a scan of the back of the eye 
where again we can look at the really fine details of the retina and spot things which cause nystagmus to help us with the diagnosis. And some children might even go off and have other imaging tests depending on what we find, sometimes including MRI scans. That's not that common, I have to say, in children, although it's quite common um, in clinics where people are not so used to seeing nystagmus. So MRI scans are certainly not needed for all children with nystagmus. And in fact, we do it in very, very few because you can usually get all the information you need from the other tests that I've just talked about. When we see children, we're also thinking about family history, but also genetics, as I said. The final piece of the puzzle that we do in almost all children presented to us in that way with nystagmus is we do genetic testing. We also do that in older children and adults as well when it's appropriate. And genetic testing now has come on so far that actually it's one of the most useful tools for getting to a diagnosis. Um, but a lot of the clinical tests we do are to tell us which genetic tests we're going to do. So what I mean by that is that if I have a baby again presented to me at four or five months with nystagmus and I know nothing else at that stage, the most likely thing statistically is that either they have a problem with the retina causing nystagmus or that they have a thing called manifest latent nystagmus which is very benign and occurs in children who have squints. So those two things are probably the most common but we need to get all those details to try and find out which way we're going with it and if we think it's a retinal problem the genetic testing we'll do is one type of test and if we think it's not retinal related it's related to a problem at the front of the eye or the child has something else going on we'll do a different set of tests. So the way that we actually do diagnosis in, in people with nystagmus in the UK and this is mainly children but also similar in adults is that we take lots of details from the history it's really really important lots of details from the eye examination we want to know about general health and other features we want to know about which medications they may be on we want to know about their birth history we want to know about their family history and then we examine their eyes we examine their nystagmus and we have a whole load of tests which we drip in in different ways now that whole process sounds complicated and it is to some degree but we have written in the UK a pathway for this, which is actually quite simple. Um, so each test relies on the results of the previous test or the previous question. And we've published this um, in our, our UK journal called I, and we're also making it a UK um, standard protocol. So through our Royal College, we're trying to make it a standard so that every doctor does it the same way. But on the whole, most of the big centres in the UK will deal with nystagmus in a similar way as I've just described. For adults or for new onset nystagmus in an older child, so a 17 year old who suddenly gets nystagmus over the course of a week, the diagnostic pathway is a little bit more urgent. For most new onset type nystagmus um, cases, we would be doing fairly rapid imaging in terms of MRI scans because acquired nystagmus, as we call it, often has a different group of causes than children who are born with nystagmus or children who get nystagmus in the first few months of life. Um, but broadly, the sorts of tests we have and the questions we're asking are similar. We just tend to do it in a different order. So if I was to summarise the um, UK experience of diagnosis in nystagmus, um, really, we are trying to standardise things. We've got much better over the last 10 to 20 years, um, at not just doing MRI scans on all people with nystagmus without thinking about it. We're much better at finding clues now in the history, in the examination, and the genetics has come on so much further that we're getting an accurate genetic diagnosis in far more children. And these, this is now available nationally across the UK. Um, so things are becoming standardised. And I know this is the same in lots of other countries around Europe um, and the US and beyond.